All right, so the next uh, piece that I want to go over real quick is Vault authentication methods. So authentication methods are components that perform authentication into Vault itself. So if you think of a user trying to access data within Vault or an application trying to read a secret, um, that's what we're talking about here. So authentication methods are responsible for assigning identity to those users and assigning policies to those users as well. So figuring out what they can do and what they can't do um, within Vault. Um, multiple authentication methods can be enabled depending on the use case within Vault. And then when you stand up a brand new install of Vault, the default authentication method um, is token. So as we saw in the demo before, it gives the root um, token and that's the only authentication method um, that we can use up front. So here's a quick list of the authentication methods that are enabled in Vault or that can be enabled by Vault. Um, you have things like AWS, Azure, Google, um, you know, things that may be popular for head customers, you know, LDAP, uh, things like Okta. And then we have, you know, tokens and, you know, a local username and password within Vault. So for the demo purposes, I'm just going to demo the username and password um, to show you how everything works. So as we had before, we have a single version of Vault um, up and running. So if you want to look at the authentication methods that are um, enabled, again, I said only tokenization is enabled by default. So what we want to do is enable username and password. So we're going to do vault auth enable and the uh, authentication method. So that is username and password. All right, so as simple as that. So now the first thing we need to do is create some policies and then we'll create some users, bind those to the policies and then we will um, demonstrate uh, how they work. So first thing we want to do, I'll we'll look at, I've created two files already, very small files, but they are uh, two policies. So app admin, he'll have access to all the secrets and he has capabilities of create, read, update, delete, and list. And then I have another one, app read only. So he has read and list only. So the first thing we wanna do is uh, create these policies using those files. So we're gonna do vault policy write, and then we wanna create a name. So I'm just gonna stick with the same naming standard here, app admin. And we point to the file app, app admin.hcl. All right, so we created our first one there. So if we wanted to look at it, we can just do vault policy list. And we can see now we have the app admin on top of the two default policies. If we wanted to read what that is, vault policy read app admin. So there is our ACL or our policy. So we've got path as a secret, and then we've got a star, and then we've got our capabilities, as I mentioned before, create, read, update, delete, and list. So the th second thing we wanna do is go ahead and create our other one. So policy write, we're gonna do re app read only, and we're gonna call it app read only.hcl. All right, so we've got our second one here. We can look at, we've got our, our second one, and then we can also um, read that as well so we do read only so you can see that we have a secret star and then we've got capabilities just read and list there all right so the next thing we want to do is create some users so i'm going to clear the screen here um, so i'm going to create two users here um, so i'm going to do vaults right and these are going to be local users so not ldap or anything like that user pass users call it brian and then we're gonna give it a password of Krausen. And then we're gonna assign the policy of him to at, uh, if I could type, at admin. Oh, I see. It's gotta be users. There we go. So we have our new user named Brian, password Krausen, and he's assigned to the app admin policy. So the fun of it, we will create another one, right off user pass users and superman, whatever. And then we do password equals man of steel, oh, no space. And then we'll do policies and we'll make him at read only. Cool. So now we have two users, Brian and Superman in here, and they're assigned to the proper policies. So for the fun of it, let's log out. Let's do it in the GUI for the fun of it. 
username. So let's log in as Superman, Man of Steel. Log in. So as we mentioned before, he has read only and he has list. So we can click through and see, see all these. But if we go back and try to create a new secret, so app super, Superman, we'll just create one of his own. Man of Steel, let me get the same password. And we should get an error. So permission denied because we only have read and list. So for the fun of it, we will sign out. Oh. Oh. There we go. And then we'll sign in as myself. If I could type my name. So again, we have all the capabilities before we can read, read our passwords, etc. But we can go if you want to create another secret, so we call it ahead. And rocks, and we do save, so we have permission to create new secrets. So we can see this this new secret here that we just created. So um, that's it for the authentication methods, um, and then the next one we will go through and look at the secrets engines. Thanks.